So uh, I know a lot of you might be totally new to Fusion 360, and you had that surprise look like, hey, I didn't know you could collaborate in Fusion 360 using uh, A360 at all, right? So today we're going to be talking about how you can do just that. So thanks everyone for joining. Uh, as Nisha said, today I'm going to be sharing with you how to collaborate uh, inside Fusion 360, but how you can do this using A360. So you know, none of this is possible without A360. So I'm going to walk you through some of the basics. What we're going to be showing you today is a bit of a workflow, and it's around chocolate, believe it or not. So this is a story about making some chocolate as a collaborative team. Uh, there's three team members and how they're able to work together. I'm included in the team as well. Um, so let's get started. So who's who in this situation? So we have our first character. We have Ed Marshall, who's a chocolatier out of Berkeley, California. And what's his role in this in this whole thing? He's the final decision maker. So he's the one who's you know given the yes or no on the design of the chocolate, everything he likes. He's going to approve or disapprove of it. He has a MacBook Air and he has zero CAD experience. So he's never done 3D modeling. Um, all he has is just really the final say. So I'm the lead designer on this project. I have 3D modeling experience with Fusion 360 and I'm using a MacBook Pro. So how does that fit into the, um, the equation? And we'll go through that a little bit later on. And then we have Fesseline. I love that picture. She's a machinist, she's a tech shop member, and she's using a MacBook Pro. So she might have used Fusion a little bit, but her role in the situation is she has access to all these tools at a makerspace such as Tech Shop, and she's going to be machining out the mold and actually making the physical prototypes of everything that we want. So even though we're not spread out very far across the globe, you'll see we're spread around here in the Bay Area. I'm in San Francisco, Sashley is in San Jose, and Ed is in Berkeley. We're really, we're not sitting at a table next to each other. So we need to collaborate. And this, you know, even though we're in a close region to each other, the same principles apply if we're spread across the globe in Beijing, San Francisco, London, the same principles completely apply here. So the first step, you know, once that we've met, we've decided we want to take on this task of building these chocolates, the first step was me creating an A360 project. So as you, most of you probably know, an A360 project is a shared place that really serves as a central repository. So everything that's associated with this project is stored in this one place. Uh, so as you can see in that image, I went ahead and created that A360 project. I invited the team members. So you can see Ed, myself, and Sashleen invited to the project. There's all of our information. Uh, I'm able to add some key milestones to the calendar. So maybe you know we're going to have a design brainstorm. Maybe we're going to you know look at our final design. I can add all of that to the calendar, and I don't have to worry about tracking down their emails and sending them Outlook invites. You can connect it to your mail if you want, but I just went ahead and did it in the A360 project. And then I'm also able to upload any documents that we might need to use. So maybe there's you know we're dealing with food here. We need a safety sheet on using silicone in a mold because we need to know if it's safe and best practices. So I'm able to upload those files to that same project. So I don't have to send people to a public link or anything that has that file or URL. I can just upload everything I need to an A360 project. And now I'm going to hop over to Safari and just show you live that project. So we didn't make it up. Here it is. Here's that project in A360. You'll see project members. I can go to the calendar here. We have things like our initial design review. Final design is actually happening really soon this morning. Um, and then we're like seeing, seeing the mold uh, right there on the calendar. So this project is on A360, but the beauty of it is that we're able to tie in all of our Fusion 360 designs to this one project. So I'll go back to the project page, and you'll be able to see all the project members, activity. So for example, Ed was able to comment. Everything shows up here. We'll get into more of this in a little bit. Now that we have really the framework set up, how do we proceed through? So the first thing that I did as the designer in this situation was I start, started doing some hand sketches. So I may not want to work in 3D. I may not want to jump into Fusion quite yet. Maybe I just want to sketch it out on a pen and paper. So there's an image that I sketched out. Uh, I can take a picture of it, and I can upload it to our project using the A360 app. So this is an app I have on my iPhone. You can get it on the App Store for iPhone or the Google Play Store for Android. Um, and in that app, I'm able to take a picture of my drawing, upload it to the project, and let everyone see it. So again, I'm not having to email it or text it or do anything like that. Once it's been uploaded, I'm able to get some initial feedback. So Sashleen is a machinist. She's able to see my sketches, and she says, you know, it looks great. Make sure you don't have any undercuts. So 
her background in machining, and she knows that if we're going to make this mold, I can't have small internal cavities because it's just not going to work for a mold. And then on top of that, in the app, Ed is able to download my image, mark it up. So you'll see here he gives the red X to the two he doesn't like, and he gives the big green check to the one he does like. Um, and I can switch over to back to the project in the web browser. And if I go to data, I can go and here is the concept sketches. There's that JPEG that is uploaded to the project through the app when I click upload. And there you can see Fashion's comment. Make sure I don't have any undercuts and everything's right there. So I'll go back to the project. And you get a sense of how no matter if you're using a mobile device, a web browser, you know, maybe you're using just a, an iPad or anything, you're able to stay up to date with all the latest information uh, through A360. That is, now that we have a rough design that we want to move forward with, I'm able to use Fusion 360 to actually create a 3D model of the chocolate design that we want. So you'll see here on the right hand side there's a screenshot of Fusion running, and when I save it, I'm able to see a list of all of my projects, and included in that project is this A360 project that I created because it's tied to my account. Um, I'm able to save my design in there, and this just shows that you can create your A360 project before and start doing some collaborating before you do 3D modeling. Or if maybe I just created a 3D model and I said, hey, I want to work with some people on this, I can create a project right then and there inside Fusion 360. So I'll switch over to Fusion, and you'll see here's the 3D model of the chocolate that we want to make. And when I'm able to save it, I can save it uh, to this project uh, in A360, and I'm able to access all of my data there in the data panel. Let me see if I can open that up and actually switch over. I have all of my projects. And let me see if I can go to the chocolate. There it is. And I can open up that project, and you'll see here in the data panel I have that 3D model. This is a Fusion 360 file, as well as all the other models. So you'll see here, files rather, here's that image that I uploaded with the app. So everything is all tied together in one place. And now, within a web browser, after I've uploaded and saved the 3D model, Ed is able to take a look at it using the large model viewer in A360, just in a web browser. And he's able to get a feel for what the 3D model is. So he doesn't have to work with just a static image. He has this dynamic 3D model that he can tumble around, zoom in, do all of that. And he's able to say, you know, he loves it. Let's move forward with this. And I think the key thing here is that he doesn't know how to do 3D modeling. He has just a you know very light laptop, and he just needs to view a 3D model, and that's it. He doesn't need to do anything else. So this large model viewer in the web browser is just perfect for him on A360. So let's take a look at what he can do. So I can navigate over to data, and you'll see here there's that chocolate file. So I can click it to launch a viewer, and you'll see here on the left-hand side I have all this information about uh, the design. So you'll see when I created it, which project it's stored in, you actually see that it's in use by me. So I have it running right now in Fusion 360. So it tells any other viewer that it's in use by Taylor. So it's just some nice information to have. And on his end, what he's able to do is just click and drag and orbit around the 3D model, get a sense for you know how large this is, any of the details, and really get to see it uh, for himself. And if he gets out of control, you can hit the home button right there to get a nice view of it. Um, if you had a more complex model, you can go ahead and explore some of the other uh, options here in the large model viewer. So if I click on the structure, I can see you know just the chocolate here. Or if I had some more components, I could explode them. I can do all of that. And this is right within a web browser. So you don't need to have any plugins installed or download Fusion. Just really simple, all within a web browser. So you'll see he comments, I love it. We'll start machining the mold. And now, Sashleen, she's a Fusion 360 user, but she didn't create the 3D model. But because she's a member of the project, she's able to access that 3D file, open it up, and generate a toolpath all within Fusion 360. So you may not have known that Fusion has some CAM capabilities. So she's able to take my design, generate a toolpath. We're using an other mill, which is a small desktop CNC. Um, and she is able to open it, as you see in this image right here, and generate a toolpath. So for those of you that don't know, a toolpath is really just the code that goes to your CNC machine that tells it where to go and where to remove material and where to cut. So if I hop back over to Fusion, when Fashlane opens it, she sees this, and she's able to hover over model and see all these different workspaces, and she can go to CAM. And now in the CAM workspace, she's able to create that toolpath. So you'll see here, here's the entire toolpath. I can simulate it briefly if we want to take a look at it. 
and she's able to take my design and create a tool path here and I can play it through. And what's really nice is that because this is all stored in one central place with A360, if I, you know, if we have a design change, as a designer I can open up the same file, make a tweak to the design, and Sashleen as a machinist, all she has to do is right click on the toolpath and say uh, generate toolpath and it will all update. So there's no need to redo any work because we're all using one nice shared file in that A360 project. And as you see here is the final product. So we have a machined out positive on the right hand side and here is a little clip on the left of it machining out uh, right there on the other mill. So that same toolpath that we saw there it is running in real life. So now that we have it, this is getting a little bit technical, but you know we have this positive of the mold. We need to go ahead and make a little box around it. So especially what she's able to do is just measure the real mold there and see that it's a little bit off from what you know the stock material might be. I'm able to take those values and create a 3D model in Fusion 360 and save out um, just some Illustrator files that she'll use for laser cutting. And the reason why I talk about this is that you know again this allows you to use the different strengths that your team might have. So maybe I know how to create Illustrator files or I have Illustrator and especially may not. I can save out those DXFs from Fusion 360 and upload those Illustrator files just as a .ai file to the A360 project. So I don't have to email them to anyone. Everything's right there. So if I go to the web browser and go back, take it out of this viewer, you'll see here in the data I have that acrylic box laser cut .ai. So all Sashleen would have to do is download that file, open it up, and start cutting away at that laser cut box. I can upload that file. I don't have to email to anyone. It just plays to our strength and really allows us to collaborate. How do you share this, you know, this 3D model with people that are maybe outside of the project? So let's say that you know, there's a bunch of people at the chocolate shop that Ed might want to share this design with, but he may not want to go through and invite them to the project. Maybe he doesn't want to give them necessarily access to everything in the project. So what he can do is create a public link. And the same thing is maybe he wants to just share it with all of his Facebook friends. He doesn't want them to be in the project per se. He just wants them to be able to view it. And you don't want them to have to download Fusion 360 or something like that to view your file. So that's where a public link comes in really handy. So what you're able to do is generate a public link, which is something that you can turn on and turn off. Uh, and it creates this custom URL that's unique to this Fusion 360 design. So anyone can type in this URL into their web browser and anyone on the line, if you want to go ahead and do it, you can type in this URL right here, nice and pretty, and it'll load that same 3D viewer in your web browser, but really without any of the information that you may not need to know. So it's not going to tell you necessarily when I made the design, how many versions of it I have, any comments that our team's left, but you'll still be able to view the 3D model. And another box in there is you'll see that you can enable it to be downloaded or not. So maybe we want people, the community, to iterate on this design and download it and then make some changes on their own. We can check that box for downloaded. And now anyone can view the 3D model, download it, and it's theirs to do whatever they want with it. It's no longer tied to that original 3D model. And if they went ahead and made it you know, 10 times larger and put whatever they want on top of it, we don't necessarily know and they're not going to affect the original design. Um, and then lastly, you can also put a small little password on there. So I'll show you a few different ways that you can create that public link. So if you're in Fusion 360, if you open up your data panel and you find the design that you'd like to share, you can right click on it and select share public link. And it'll open up this page right here to generate that public link. The other option is if you go to the viewer in uh, a web browser. So again, I'll click on this Fusion 360 design to open it in a browser, you'll see this big share button at the top. And this is, gives you three different options for sharing. One of them is that public link. So here's that link. I can copy it. I can select if I want people to download it or not. And I can select if I want them to have a password. Um, and one question that a lot of people ask is, OK, is this pointing at just this version of my design, or is it constantly being updated? And as you probably expect, it's actually being updated. So as I continue to iterate on this design and refine it and make it better and better, I don't have to share out a new public link every time I do that. Um, if, once they have that link, they can just bookmark it, and they're always looking at the latest version of that design. Um, what if you don't want to share the file anymore, since you're right there? Sure. So uh, well, you can always uncheck that box. So if I go back to the presentation, you'll see this, this box right here that says share the latest version with anyone. 
you can uncheck that box uh, to stop sharing that design. So maybe you know, maybe you're making some changes to it. You don't want anyone to see it. You're not quite ready. You can uncheck that box and then check it when you are ready for people to view it. The Fusion 360 does offer an offline mode. Um, so let's say you pull up your laptop on a plane. You don't want to pay for the Wi-Fi. I believe by default your last two weeks worth of work is cached locally on your machine. That way you have access to your designs. You can make changes to them. You can save them. And then the follow-up question, the next time you do have network access, it will upload those changes to that design to A360. So there's nothing manual you have to do. Uh, you're allowed to work offline, which is a huge benefit. Uh, and also, what I would probably point out is, let's say you're in somewhere where you have maybe a less than ideal Wi-Fi connection. Maybe you're in Starbucks or somewhere where the Wi-Fi is awful and really slow. What you can do is you can actually toggle Fusion 360 to work offline explicitly. So if you click on your name at the top, you can click work offline, which pretty much allows you to still be connected to the internet. So before, you would have to turn off your Wi-Fi, which would I mean you can't get any emails or anything like that. Whereas you can now just toggle Fusion connection to the internet and you can work offline. And then when you're on a more stable internet connection, you can uncheck that box to come back online and upload this design. Uh, one other question was about the mobile app with isolating um, parts, fusion parts. Mm -hmm. and right now, the limitation is only a single part. They would like to see that where you can isolate multiple parts. I think that okay. has to do with gestures and clicking. Yeah, I know you can isolate just to view the details of one component. Um, one thing that you might want to check out is if you can create sub-assemblies. You can have a component with multiple components inside of that one. You might be able to isolate that larger sub-assembly. So maybe try that. If not, maybe it's something we could look into adding to the, to the mobile app. The other thing I wanted to show was uh, the other options you have. And the most interesting one, I think, is the also the embed option. So maybe Ed has on his website, he wants to market his product, and he doesn't just want to put a static image he can generate some embed code. So it's really simple. You choose the size you want. You copy this embed code. And if I hit preview, we should be able to see a nice little preview of what this viewer would look like. Um, and you can just paste it in right in the middle of your HTML code. And now that viewer is embedded into your site and updating with every version of your design. So you're not having to go in the back end and edit your website every day to update it. It's always updating. And here's that same 3D viewer in there embedded form in a web browser. You might have heard that you have a few different rendering options in Fusion 360. One of them is local rendering. So this first one that we see here is some live ray tracing rendering that's occurring within the product in Fusion 360. And we also have some cloud rendering. So we've just changed this slightly in the last update of Fusion 360. So if I'm in the product and I want to create a rendering, I can hover over in my current workspace and go to render. And I can essentially change everything I want. I can you know, change the material. I can change the environment. So I can change the lighting style, the exposure, the rotation. I do all this. Maybe I want to highlight a certain area of my design. I can choose a custom background uh, color. Maybe I want it to be darker or lighter. I can do that. Um, I can choose some camera settings. Maybe if I want a shorter focal length to give it more of an aggressive rendering, you can see there I can dip that down. And now I have. Uh, so much more, a lot more perspective rather in the rendering. Um, and then you'll see I have two different options. So I have enable ray tracing. So if I click this, it's going to do some live ray tracing local on my computer. What I mean by that is using my local resources. Um, it's not using the cloud at all. It's using uh, my my graphics card here on my laptop. And I can choose different qualities. I can choose advanced for some more advanced rendering. You'll see it looks kind of fuzzy at first. And it's going to iterate over and over and over again uh, on that image, making it better over time. And you'll see I have a lapse time and number of iterations right here. And if you do want to you know, render locally, it's totally up to you. It's just that you know, I can't go back and keep working on my design. I need to let it sit here, uh, which is great if you have some time and if you want to render it locally and watch it you know, come to life. Uh, one tip I have is if you are rendering locally, don't expect for this to tell you it's done rendering because it never finishes. It's just iterating over and over again until it gets to a quality that you like. And then when you like it, you can click pause and you can capture that image at your current resolution and save it out to your uh, machine. 
So don't sit here thinking it's going to tell you, hey, I'm done rendering, because it's never going to finish. Uh, we've that looks good, though. It looks good, yeah. We've had some people ask, like, hey, it never finished. And it's like, well, it just it kind of maxes out over time. So the other option is cloud rendering. So you'll see here at the bottom, we have um, some renderings that were done automatically. So if every version of your design in Fusion 360, A360, and the cloud is rendering some, uh, some versions for you. So I can click on these, and I can view uh, that rendering that's created automatically with each version. And maybe I like the camera angle here. I like everything about it, and I just want to re-render it at a larger resolution. I can click re-render, and now I have all these options. I can set how large my image is. I can choose the you know, render quality, exposure, all sorts of settings. And uh, this rendering uses cloud credits. Um, so you'll see you can use a maximum of 16 cloud credits per rendering, but as you tweak these parameters, you'll have different amounts of cloud credits required for the rendering. And then you'll get an estimated wait time, and when I click Start Rendering, it'll add it to the queue, and when it's done, it'll let me know that, hey, your rendering's finished, and I can, I can do it. So the great thing with this is, you know, maybe I need to keep working in Fusion 360 on this project or a different one. I can start the cloud rendering, I can close out of the render workspace, and I can get back to you know working on my design without having to wait for the rendering to finish. Um, you'll see here I have some other ones that I might want to cloud render, and the other way you could get to this is by clicking cloud rendering right here. Um, similar window. You can also get to it from a web browser. So if I go to the uh, design, you'll see on the left hand side this is to someone like myself that's in the project, I have all the versions right here. And one thing I want to point out that I might, may not have mentioned is that this 3D viewer is actually associated with each version. So if I want to see what version 18 of this design looks like, all I have to do is click on it, and I can get a 3D view of it, not just the 2D static image. Um, and also for rendering, I can click on the rendering tab, and it'll pull down those uh, automatic renderings that are being created. You'll see this one that's in the queue, so that's the one I just started. Um, and I have that same re-render option here in a web browser. So even if someone like Ed, who doesn't have Fusion, he has access to all of those same cloud rendering options in the web browser as you do in the product. So everything kind of comes together really nicely with A360. Um, so that's rendering. Let me go back so to the a, a comment just came in on the rendering. Um, more of an observation yeah. from Tim. He said, renderings are only created for versions manually saved, not auto-saved versions. Um, kind of like something good to point out to people. Yeah, so that's a good point. So every time, so in the tool, let me stop this rendering and go to model. So if I, you know, explicitly commit a save by clicking the save, this will render automatically, but if I have, if I hit that automatic time interval where maybe, for me it's every 15 minutes, a new version saved, that one won't be rendered. So that's a good, really good thing. Before you start asking chocolate, really, like why did we talk about chocolate for half an hour? Uh, I think this situation, as silly as it might be, is really applicable to, you know, your, you know, to a lot of different situations. So your designer very well might be an industrial designer, a mechanical designer, you work with machinists, and that might be your boss. So your boss is someone who, you know, your manager might be final decision maker who may not want to touch a CAD tool, may have never used a 3D modeling tool, but through A360 he's able to, just in a web browser on whatever device he wants, or sorry, on a laptop in a web browser or on a mobile device, stay up to date with everything that, you know, all of his people are doing, approve, disapprove, comment, mark up, do everything he wants, uh, really without having to get too deep into the product and probably getting potentially frustrated using a 3D modeling tool when all he needs to do is view and make comments and stay up to date on all that everyone's doing. Folks just getting started, what would be your recommendation of, you know, what would be the like the top three, four steps to go through to get dive you know, to dive in? Mm -hmm. Sure. So when you launch it for the first time it'll look here's Fusion 360, here's just a blank screen and the biggest thing I'd point out to really start to see how a360 and Fusion 360 work together is if you click on the show data panel button and yours will look slightly different with less projects. But what I might do is go to a project, maybe even the samples project or create a new one. Um, so let me go back to that chocolate one. And then one thing that I'll point out that might people might miss sometimes is this button right here which will launch that A360 project in a web browser. So 
said before, all of this used to be built into Fusion. It was a little bit confusing what's A360, what's Fusion. Now we've put the, you know, the, the web browser-like things in a web browser. So A360 will open up right here. So that's one way you can get to your, your Fusion 360 or your A360 projects just from within the tool. Uh, or you can use this URL, the myhub.autodesk360.com. Um, some of the other things is if you're working with some legacy data, so most people have done some 3D modeling before, maybe you want to upload it to a project. Um, Fusion works a little bit different than some other tools where you can't do any local opening of files. You have to upload them to an A360 project. And the reason behind that is that, you know, I can find it on any laptop I want and access that 3D file. It's really not supposed to be a pain. It's really supposed to be just something that helps you. So if I'm in a project, I can click Upload select any file I want to upload, and this could be a 3D CAD file, it could be an image, it could be anything. But if I select the file here, I'll show you the file types that we can upload and translate. So everything from SolidWorks, Rhino, SketchUp, uh, Katia, any other CAD tool that you might be working with, these are all 3D file types that you can upload, and we'll upload it to your A360 project and then translate. So you'll have working 3D data that you can work with and maybe continue a project that you were working on before um, or just, you know, import some parts that you might want to insert into some new designs that you're doing in Fusion 360. So that's how you can upload uh, designs, or sorry, parts to your A360 project and then this is the button you use to get to that project in a web browser if you want to do some more, uh, more advanced data management that you can't do within the tool here. Um, those are probably a few things I would show. I hope I that helps. That's good. I think that's good. The other thing I was just going to ask, you were talking about file formats there. Is there any special process that a person has to go to upload that content into Fusion? Um, I know with A360, you know, we've got the composite upload um, for inventor assemblies, making sure that people have all those reference files in the same folder before they go through that composite upload process. But for Fusion specifically, is there is there any tips or tricks there as far as how do we make sure that um, people have a good experience when they're uploading their designs that might be from a different product? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's not much you really need to do. If it's just a, a part, you can easily choose it if it's any of these file types. If it's part of an assembly, like an Inventor or SolidWorks assembly, right. uh, you, what you'll do is you would select the assembly first, and then it'll ask you to select the kind of reference parts in that assembly. Um, so just make sure you have all those well organized and you can easily find all the associated parts, and then it should work. Great. Yeah, and then here are the export options from A360. So some more advanced things like Inventor, Fusion, mm -hmm. I just, all of these, I won't read through all of them. These are all some of the uh, more advanced export options. Um, let's see here. And I guess there's one other thing that I wanted to show was when you do share a public link, if I allow this to be downloaded, let me copy this, and I'll paste it in. When you allow it to be downloaded, um, rather than having to upload all these different file types somewhere for everyone, what you're able to do with uh, the translation capabilities of A360 is just by checking that download box, anyone can choose the file type that they want to download. So if I have 10 different people that want 10 different file formats, I can just check the box for download, let them tell me which file type they want to download and if it needs to be translated, so if they wanted an STL that needs to be translated, all they have to do is click download and it says, hey, we need to translate this, what's your email, we'll send you a link when it's done translating so that you can go ahead and download your file. So it really takes all the work off of you and puts it on the cloud. The cloud's a lot better at translating files than you might be, um, so it makes it a lot easier to share it with people that want different file types. You can find those on our site and I'll actually hand it over to Nisha because she was going to show you guys where you can go to download Fusion if you don't have it, or um, where you can access the community, like the forums and the blog, and where you can see those learning resources. So Excellent. Excellent. Perfect segue. I'll hand it over to Nisha. Yeah, yeah, yeah good one, huh? Folks. Look at that. Thank you for setting that up. <laughs> yeah, thanks. That, that was great, Taylor. I think I learned a couple more things about Fusion today. I didn't know earlier, and I got very hungry, so good thing I read around lunchtime. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, so... For those of you who haven't started using Fusion yet, right, you can download a free Fusion trial today. Just go to autodesk.com forward slash Fusion 360. 